Chiron Hago's Prime is suited perfectly for stadium displays. So in this particular example, I wanted a scoreboard that was 5760 by 1080 pixels wide. And I wanted to fill that with graphics. So the first thing I'm going to do is split it up into sections. You'll see that there's sponsors on the left and right that are going to be 640 by 1080. Then I have a clock and uh, stats that's 1280 by 1080. And then we have the live action in the middle that's 1920 by 1080. So how do we set that up in Prime? Well, first of all, I'm going to go to Config, Playout Configurations. And I'm going to add the first channel, which is a GPU channel. And the video standard, instead of 1080i, I'm going to set a custom one and make that with 5760 by 1080. We'll make it 27. And then I'm going to start adding sub-channels from that. So again, we'll add a sub-channel. And the parent is going to be output number one. And this sub-channel, I'm going to call this sponsor left. And now I can set the video standard. I'm going to make another custom one. In this situation, I'm going to make it 640 by 1080. And you'll see the little blue square that's right there. That's going to be occupying that part of the board. So let's add another sub-channel. And we'll call this one, the parent is output one. We'll call this one um, main scoreboard or main score. And again, we're going to make this one a custom size. And this custom size will now be 1280 by 1080. And we'll just move this over. I want to move it over to actually start at 640. So I can drag it with my mouse or I can go exact to make it there. So let's add another sub-channel. And we'll call this one main output. Now this one is going to be actually 1920 by 1080. And we'll start that one. We're going to slide that one over. That's going to be actually at 19, uh, 1920. So that one's going to be right in the middle. Okay, so there it is right in the middle. Then we'll add another sub-channel. And the parent again is output number one. And we're going to call this one stats. Now this one's going to be the exact same one as the main score. So we'll just pick 1280 by 1080. And again, we're going to slide this one over. And so we just keep adding up the pixels. So this one is going to be set to, if I can do the math correctly, this one's going to be set to 3840. And then we'll add one more sub-channel. And this is going to match the sponsor on the left. So we'll call this one sponsor right. And th this is just to help the user know exactly which monitor to set. So we'll pick this one at 640. And I'll just shove this one all over to the right. OK, so they're all done. And the idea behind this is we're creating scenes to fill these little areas. We're, instead of creating a scene that that does the whole area, we're going to do a bunch of little scenes. So I can start uh, viewing these, or I can just, I already have a, a layout that's called Sports Subchannels. And it's a little bit easier. So the main one is at the very top. So I'm just going to put my sponsor in the left and in the right. And then we'll put the main score in there and the stats over here. Now, once they're all there, I can just hit play and they'll start appearing on my uh, canvas. And then we'll just drop, I'm just going to drop a still image into the middle. And that's going to re represent the live video. Okay, so there's my display. Now that you can see that I have separate little windows for each one. And then if I hit the touchdown right on top, 
this one's going to cover up the complete display at the top. Okay, so let's switch over and show how to connect uh, the data to the score. Now I'm, I'm using uh, Google Spreadsheets. I don't have the data from the clock, but here's my scene and it's simply dragging and dropping uh, the text to this screen. So that w whether this is data coming in from the clock itself or from another source, this is how to connect the data. And each one of these uh, layers in the, the prime scene has transitions built on them. So when the data changes, it'll automatically change on the output. And you know the touchdown one, that's the one that I want to go on top of everything. Now this one here, I have it selected so that if somebody wants to change the logo, they can. And there's a little control panel that was designed for that. So the user can simply just click on that and it would change. So here's my main output going right now. And along the bottom, you'll see that when I change the score, so I'm going to make it 27, it will change on the output automatically because the, the, the data is changing, so it will change. So I change the quarter to uh, quarter three, the third quarter, it will automatically change as well and you know the the down and distance and so forth as i change those they all all get changed and there's the sponsor logo so the user could actually just go in there and change it and it would change the sponsor logo on the output so you can see that i have separate scenes for each little area i'm not dealing with a full scene across the top and because the main output is across the top, when I hit uh, an element that goes there, it will go completely over top of all of the other screens. So that's great for you know touchdown or when there's something that's important that you want to cover up all the screens with. So you'll see data changing here now on the on the stats one as well because the data is being changed from an external source. So as the downs change or whatever, those things automatically change. And you can assign transitions to each one of those areas as well, just like I did. So very simple to set up uh, a screen that's non-broadcast aspect ratio and not have to worry about creating a complete scene to fill it all. Okay, so let's see how this works in with click effects. I previously built some lower thirds uh, in Prime, and now I want to import them into Click Effects so that the operator can actually use Click Effects to play these scenes back. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a graphic, and the Click Effects Prime editor shows up. So now I'm going to go File and Import, and this is importing a scene that I previously built including animation from Prime. So there's a player stat. I'm going to import that, open that up, and I can hit play that you can see that there's an animation associated with that. And when I hit save, it's now putting that scene as a thumbnail in click effects. So the click effects operator can actually play back the graphics and they were all created in Prime to begin with. So if I just wanted that, you know, I hit, and it plays up there on the preview and on the output. 